You know, the worst part, I still believe that the absolute worst part of booktube is getting a freaking shot of your thumbnail. Look at the viewfinder, Monica. Don't look at the camera. Hello everyone, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel, Mooney Reads, where I talk about books and things. And it's been a while and we're gonna get to that, but first I just want to say Happy New Year to everyone. Um, I was kind of... Okay, <laughs> what, are we gonna start? <laughs> I just don't know, my, 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 my mind is a frenzy because I haven't done this in such a long time that it just feels so um, strange to be here and I just kind of want to blah, 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 word vomit everything to my camera. Um, as you can see, I moved. This is a new location. The filming place is not that great, but you know, it's what we have for now and um, yeah. This is, this is pretty much it. Oh, I think I'm missing a book. Damn it. Oh no, here it is. Okay. So, hi, I'm Monica. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Um, I don't know how you got here because the algorithm must think, this bitch. <laughs> you know, but um, if you're new here, hi, I'm Monica. I mostly read science fiction and I, it, I seem to read a, a lot of like, horror, thriller, cozy horror-esque books from the pile that I have sitting next to me. I just want to say a few words about where I've been, what my reading year was like last year, and the future of this channel. Because I tried to come back last year, and I think I was not prepared. I also think I'm not prepared now, but my therapist always is encouraging me to seek out things that I can do, like activities that involve me actually doing something. <laughs> because let me tell you, depression sucks. And I'm not gonna get into a lot of my depression. I, I really don't want to. I don't wanna delve in that too much. Not for anything other than it, it has been the most horrible time in my life, the most, I would say, traumatic time in my life. And I don't really don't want to get into it, uh, honestly. I just just know that I was in a very deep, very horrible depression that required a lot of hospitalization and everything. So you can imagine, reading was the furthest thing from my mind, not to mention making booktube videos. So last year, I read a whopping 13 books. I know that sounds like little, but you know what? For someone that was battling the battle of her life, I still think I did pretty good. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna take it. So I've been doing better. I hit a rough patch just recently and I was crying to my therapist telling him that life would never get better and he's like Okay, you need some structure in your life because right now my life is just I'm looking around me and my life is a disaster. You think it looks good, but it's not. It's actually a disaster. So I need some structure. And booktube gives me structure. It gives me something to look forward to. It gives me something to put a face of makeup on or, you know, to to read. Because I haven't been reading because depression takes away your ability to enjoy things in general. Can you believe we're back like a year later and my cats are still using the fucking litter box while I'm filming? But I'm just gonna keep it in because I really, I really, I have to do this or else I'm gonna back out. I've tried filming videos so many times and I've just backed out. So we're gonna do it. Depression robs you of your ability to enjoy your hobbies and it robbed me of my ability to enjoy my hobby, which is reading. And I think if I come back to booktube and have like that feeling of people depend on you because that's something that I hold deeply like the fact that I say I'm gonna post so and so many videos a week we'll get to that <laughs> we'll get to everything that really helps me so I know you came here for the books but I'm just giving you my life story right now so yeah so I decided that I need to make an effort and I need to set a schedule and I need to get better. I really need to get better. And I am, I am a lot better. Like I, I, I think you can see it in my face that <laughs> I am a lot better. Like not because you can, you can see the pressure on someone's face, but I, I genuinely feel better. So uh, this channel, I, I have my coffee here because I knew this was gonna be a long video because come on now, when is it a long video with me, honestly? <laughs> I originally, when I sat down to film this video, I was going 
<laughs> excuse me, I was going through everything that I wanted to say and I was gonna be like, I'm gonna post three videos a week, so on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and then I decided that that was not going to happen. I'm going to post two videos a week. I'm, that's four, Monica. But we'll post two videos a week uh, on Mondays and Wednesdays, and um, they're gonna be just book two videos. What can I say? Um, I do plan on doing secret TBRs. I do plan on doing a bunch of projects. I have them all written down, like my therapist said. I wrote everything down, and I plan to do it. The thing is, reading. My ability to concentrate was shot <laughs> thanks to depression. Like, you have no idea. Depression and TikTok do not mix. Let me just tell you. If you're feeling down and you want to watch TikTok for three to four hours, please don't. Like, it's not really... I mean, do whatever you think is best for you, but for me, it was really bad. So, um, my ability to read really suffered. And um, that's one of my goals for this channel. So let's talk about channel goals. Number one, make two videos a week, Mondays and Wednesdays. So go up on Mondays and Wednesdays. I, I am sticking to that. I, I really need that stability in my life where I can say, I'm going to make this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to do this on these days and so on. Um, obviously, they're just going to be my normal <laughs> videos. Um, if I do feel like posting a third video because I'm feeling extra sassy that week, you'll get a third video, but for now you can expect two videos from me. The other thing that you can expect from me are no more hauls because I am kind of on a no-buy year and I'm doing really well. I have been actually since December, it's, it's been since November, so it's almost been like th two months and I've bought um, some essentials, but other than that, I haven't bought anything. As far as book goes, uh, I have set my Goodreads reading goal to 10 books. Why? Because I think that that's logical for somebody that's not doing that well. However, I do have 52 books off of my physical TBR to show you that I want to get to in 2023. If you do the math, which I'm pretty sure you already have, that is one book a week. I am no longer a one book a day girly, let alone a one book a week girly. And some of these are, are, are tomes. Some of these are over 600 pages long and um, have no audiobook version. <laughs> so I don't know how we're going to do it. But I'm not saying that these are all the books that I'm going to read. I'm not saying that there are no other books out there that I want to read. But what I'm saying is... I have a lot of books on my bookshelves that are just sitting there and these are some of them and I'm gonna at least give them a chance I'm gonna give them a chance and if I don't like them I can DNF but these are it I divided them up into little categories we have um, the smallest ones surprisingly sorry there's one that got put in the wrong category okay now it's in the correct category Surprising, I mean, it's not really surprising, I guess, because the the, the, the biggest pile is sci-fi. You know, you come here for sci-fi, I guess, or my dashing personality. Then there are some uh, spooky, thriller, mystery, weird books. And then we have a little, just two non-fiction. And then we have cozy reads, like, that was the only way that I could distinguish them. They're not sci-fi, they're not mystery. Well, there's one that is mystery, but they're mostly cozy reads. So without further ado, um, I'm going to show you my TBR for the year. Did you miss my cats? They're still all around. Let's start with cozy books. Now, for cozy books, most of them are middle grade. So the first book I have here is Latsoe by Darcy Little Badger. I've been wanting to read this for a really long time, but I haven't gotten around to it. This is about a young woman um, that can see spirits and her cousin is dead. He died, but he comes to her and he tells her that he was actually murdered. So um, she has to solve the mystery. But I've heard that it's a, like a really cozy, really sweet read. So that's why I put it in my cozy read pile. Watch it be like gruesome and scary, but I 
got the one and only Ivan by Katherine Applegate, um, which is a. Uh, it's not even. It, this is a kids book. This is middle grade for sure. And I tried to read this and I couldn't when I was like deep in depression. This is about Ivan. He's a gorilla trapped in a cage in a mall and he makes friends I believe with a little elephant and I don't know what else because I know that there's there should be like three animals but yeah this is like such a sweet book and if you don't know gorillas are my favorite animal gorillas elephants cow there you go fun fact about me I, I'm kind of embarrassed that I have this here but this is this was our pact by Ryan Andrews I've had this graphic novel for years and every year when it gets cold I say I'm gonna read it I'm gonna read it and you know what happens I don't fucking read it um, it's about a group of friends who decide to go like on an adventure basically and at the end everybody kind of ditches the main protagonist and he has to go with someone else and that's all I know it's um, the autumnal equinox like this would have been great to read for autumn but I wasn't reading in autumn so yeah then we have the last two middle grade books by Neil Gaiman that I have I do have a Nancy boy and American Gods but I'm not sure I want to read though <laughs> I want to read that but that's why it's not it's piled but I have fortunately the milk by Neil Gaiman which I have no idea what it's about but this this is such a quick read like seriously look at that this is such a quick read I might pick this up later and then we have the graveyard book by Neil Gaiman which everybody says is great and I haven't read it <laughs> this one is about a boy who is raised by ghosts and then somebody tries to kill him and the ghosts have to help him <laughs> remember how I like to go into books not knowing a lot Still going to be a thing. Wonderlust, Wonder, <laughs> Wonderlust, Wondersmith by um, uh, Jessica Townsend. This is the sequel to Nevermore. Which, by the way, I found it funny that uh, Wednesday the show was called Nevermore, and this is about a place called Nevermore. So yeah, uh, another middle grade. Uh, this is the continuation to Nevermore uh, by. Jessica Townsend. I have no idea what happens in this one. I read that book so long ago. I really loved it, but I didn't continue reading it. Next up, we have Practical Magic. Now, this was actually a book that was gifted to me by my lovely husband after I watched the movie and I absolutely fell in love with it. And then I saw Lucy Moon uh, review it. And basically, it's just a cozy, lovely, enthralling, magical, fairy tale esque adult book so I thought you know I kind of need happy reads because my sad read pile is long and intense so this is the book this is it this is the book that I want to read when I'm feeling down which is a lot lately I'm sorry <laughs> I mean I make fun of it but it is it is like that's what happens when your brain is like Hey, how about we don't produce the things that make you happy? And you're like, okay, well, I guess I'm going to deal with that. I should have made different videos for these piles because really. Uh, let's go next with the two, <laughs> two non-fictions that I want to read. Um, Other Minds by Peter Godfrey Smith. I've put this in so many TBRs. This is uh, about whether, imagine if life on Earth evolved not from not to humans but to octopuses which by the way is the correct way of saying it yeah i'm really excited to read this i really love reading um uh, non-fiction but i don't read enough of it and then what a fish knows by um jonathan balcombe uh i love fish if you don't know i have thalassophobia and my way of getting through my thalassophobia is reading about marine animals and their lives and and knowing basically like they're just any other animal there's nothing to be scared of okay so we're gonna get into the two big piles but again I'm gonna leave science fiction for last so if you're here by the way I'm gonna try to be a good booktuber and do 
cards and, and, and chapters and you know all that fun shit so um, if you're here now it's time for horror and yes it comes up to my boobs um, horror and kind of just unsettling books that's what I call this pile unsettling books so they're by the way they're not a particular order I just grabbed them out of my shelves and decided to throw them in here this is Silk by Caitlin R. Kiernan I don't know if that's how you say her name I love that this is a tiny um what is it called pocket not pocketbook oh mass mass market paperback I miss reading these um I read I have it down here uh the drowning girl here we go I, I read The Drowning Girl by her. It's one of my favorite horrors of all time. If you haven't read it, read it, recommend it. Silk, no idea what it's about. But the main character's name is Spider. So, I guess she's going to become a spider monster or something. I don't know, because if, if it's anything like The Drowning Girl, this is more psychological than anything. It's more like what's going on in a person's mind, which I dig. Then we have Silence by Shusaku Endo. And this is about a 1600s Jesuit priest who, it's about his former mentor <laughs> who renounced his, uh, his faith under torture. And it's about him finding him and stuff like that. Got to admit, this was a cover. This was not a cover buy. This was one of those like I must have it, you know, kind of buy. And but I really do want to read it. I do really want to read it. What another one that I'm really excited to read is Darkness by John Soul. I started to read this, but it it's it's actually very YA. Um, but now I'm kind of into it like I remember what I read and I was like okay that was interesting and I have actually the audiobook for this so um yeah I don't know there's something that I've been missing about reading physically which I think is because I tried to read too much at once to impress you guys I hope that you will be impressed by my inability to read more than one book a month <laughs> Again, I have 52 books here, but you know, House of Leaves. I want to like this book. I want to like it. I want to not be bored out of my mind by it. But I was. <laughs> when I tried to read, I was so bored. This was like the most disappointing book. But I didn't finish it, so I don't know if I could count that as disappointing. But, um... I really want to read. I want to know what all the fuss is about, and I want to know if I like it or if I hate it or if I get it. If I don't get it, I don't know. This is about a house that is bigger on the inside than it is on the outside, and then like somebody finds somebody murdered, and it's got all these weird. Like, look, look at this. Like, can you see that? Like, I don't know. I just, I really want to read it. I want to know what all the fuss is about, and. I know that this is old, but it's in the pile. Then we have Red River Girl, A Journey into the Heart of Canada. Dark Heart of Canada. This is about the body of a 15-year-old indigenous runaway, Tina Fontaine, found in the river. And about the investigation that goes on and stuff like that. Um, I think this is a, a, a true story, I think. Yeah, this is a true story. So this is sad. Then we have Pen Pal by Dathan Oberbach. I bought this so long ago being like, I'm going to read it because it's so scary and stuff. And I haven't read it. But I do think that it's really cool that this started off as a Reddit thread and it became a book. So it's about a narrator who's trying to find his past. And it's apparently really creepy. That's, that's all I know. But that literally that's all I know see see how that's one thing uh, I'm gonna interject here I'm gonna interject interjection that's one thing that I think this no buy is helping me with is just not buying just because oh my god I got this I got this you know like somebody would mention a book and then I would buy it I think I just have to be more mindful of my buying 
if you know what I mean, I have to be more careful with what I buy because this is not my forever home and I, moving these books again does not sound like fun. And if you see me rummaging is because I realized that these were out of order. Now something else is going off, but we're get through it. We're working it. Daphne du Maurier, arguably one of my favorite authors. Tried to read Jamaica Inn, but this was during the first of my depression. I got to page 76 and was rather bored. So I'm going to try again. I'm going to try again because one of my booktube buddies really loves this book and says it's really good. So um, yeah, it's about murder mystery. Then The Loving Spirit is about... This is her debut novel. I don't know about this one. This one seems more romantic and everything. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how this stacks up. Like, because I don't think this will stack up to the, her other books. Then we have another. I bought this because I was like, I'm going to get back into reading. And I read to page 12. <laughs> so this is Hyde by Nell Patterson. It's seven friends, one killer. You can run, but you can't hide. So uh, yeah, it's about seven friends and one of them is killing them all. Uh, sounds like a premise I've heard a million times before, but yeah. I am so ashamed that this book is still here because I have decided that I'm just going to read it. I'm just going to freaking read the book. I think I'll buy the Kindle version and just read it like that, but The Silent Companions by Laura Purcell. Ever since I saw someone say that the best way to consume Laura Purcell's books was through audio. I've been dying to read this in the audio, but it's not available in my country anywhere, anywhere. Like I've tried the, the depths of the internet to find this book um, in audio and I can't and it's sad and, and it's not on Audible and it's not on script. It's not anywhere. Like the rights are not for my country. So, but this is about a newly wed widow. <laughs> That, like an oxymoron yeah she got married she got pregnant and her husband died basically and she gets to send she gets sent <laughs> to live in her husband's uh estate and people basically don't like her very much i guess they think she caused her husband's death because that's what women do you know we cause men's death in books um uh, ask rachel from from what is it my cousin rachel so um She's there all alone, and then she starts finding these figurines that oddly resemble everyone she knows. I mean, that sounds amazing. Like, see, there are a lot of books here that I'm just like, well, I bought it because of this and this. But this one, like, genuinely, I bought this book wanting to read it. So, there's that. Then we got Spooks Bill. Another book that I bought because I thought I liked children mystery books i got to page 40 and stopped this is about a boy that moves to a town called spooksville where spooky shit happens then a book that i bought thinking i'm gonna read it over halloween and then i didn't do any reading because let's just say depression my job whatever you know if this is getting repetitive so uh we have the taking of jake livingston love that cover i think this book is gonna be a lot of fun honestly then we have one that doesn't have a, an English translation and I usually steer away from books that don't have an English translation because I'm like, what am I doing holding up this book here that you can't read? But you know what? This is my fucking channel and <laughs> I read in both languages. So um, this is The Big Game or Gran Juego and it sounds like Pan's Labyrinth. It's about, it's about a boy who inherits a bunch of money like he inherits a great estate like these books tend to go um and basically he is never kind of seen again and then one day he dies and the last words he says i'll say them in spanish and i'll translate them el gran juego solo quiero volver al gran juego so it, he says the, the game i just want to return to the great game and it's about him leaving a little girl clues to solve what this great game is this sounds so good why haven't i read this honestly honestly you fit okay all right we're down we're, we're down to the last pile of spooky reads we have 
Shirley Jackson's Dark Tales, which are just some of her short stories. I could have put this in the short story collection, but I have another Shirley Jackson here. So that would be all of the Shirley Jackson in my shelves read. So um, it's just Dark Tales. Then I have Shirley Jackson Hangs a Man, which is a... What is that called? Dark Academia before it was Dark Academia featuring a young woman instead of a young man, which I, I, I dig, I dig. And she basically feels mediocre and you know, the typical Dark Academia setting with Shirley Jackson's marvelous writing. Also, I did a lot to get this cover. So hang on, let me put it in front of my face. So I hope I like it. <laughs> then we have uh, Yusunari Kawabata Snow Country, which is about forbidden love between a a man and a geisha, I think. Yeah, she, he believes he's, he's in love with her. It's going to be sad. And finally, one of the tomes that I have for this is now backstory <laughs> so i used to work for hbo and i did the trailer for this movie like the, the movie that was based off of this book and i fucking love that movie i know a lot of people don't like it because it's weird as fuck and even martin scorsese was like this is this, you cannot turn this book into a movie and then someone did the movie not the best movie i've ever seen but it's really there's something about it that i really like and that is a New York's Winter's Tale. Yes, I got the movie cover because it was cheap. Also, it was because it was the only one that I could find. This is about <laughs> demons and angels and flying horses and life after death and 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 superpowers and magic and a love story to end all love stories. You know what? I already know what this is about. This is about a love story and it's sad. <laughs> Should have just called this my sad pie. <laughs> so uh, that's one of the tomes that I want to read. Now, um, if I was monetized, I would take, I would like in put here, uh, break. You know, because that's a lot of books, and we still have the science fiction section to go. And I assure you, it's in no order because the first book is a Brandon Sanderson book, and I have declared myself this year as a Brandon Sanderson hater. Like, straight up, a hater, I hate. I don't like Brandon Sanderson books. I didn't like Mistborn. I liked the, uh, I liked Skyward. Then, what is it, Starlight? I don't know, the second one I didn't like. And then I actually, spoiler alert, read the third one this year. <sighs> I had to finish it at 3.5 speed, like, it was so bad, but I do have Steel Heart, and this is his le least loved novel. Like nobody talks about Steel Heart, so I'm thinking that I might like it just because nobody talks about it. Because it's like his, like no, no, we don't talk about Sanderson, you know. <laughs> so I have Steel Heart. Uh, my husband got this for me at the beginning of my depression to try to cheer me up. I haven't read it yet. <laughs> I'm not gonna talk much about this book because this book really burnt me because um reasons i don't want to talk about it because i don't want to like annoy like not annoy i don't want to hurt the author but my camera's flashing so it's a good time to switch up my batteries i'll be right back so the the angle will be different you'll be fine battery has been changed so the book of m by Peng Shen, and I just saw that it was blurbed by Paul Tremblay. And Paul Tremblay wrote one of the most amazing books that I read last year, which is A Head Full of Ghosts. Recommend. It's right here. Recommend it if you want to read. So don't read it if you are going through some trauma or um, anxiety. Depression, sure, but if you're going through any type of how do I say this? Like anything with hallucinations or anything like that, don't read that book. But um, otherwise, yeah, read it, definitely. But we're gonna talk about the Book of M. The Book of M is a dystopian novel. There's this virus that 
deletes your shadow and along with it it deletes your memories and we're following a couple i don't remember the name i know one of them is ori ori and his wife max so max um gets sick and she runs away because she doesn't want to um and she doesn't want Ori to get sick and I think that you also become very violent with this disease so it's kind of zombie-esque all right so um but Ori is just determined to find her and to cure her because he loves her so sounds really good I've had this on my TBR forever and now I finally have the book and honestly I do um have the book because it's the book of M and I'm Monica and I just feel some kind of something about that <laughs> then we have a new release and the one I, is this the one the one the sci-fi category i don't know but i know that is this was um highly praised and i know that books and lala liked it and she and i have similar tastes so we have leech by heron ennis ennis and i should have looked up how to say that but um i wasn't prepared i'm never prepared so leech um this is about <laughs> A uh, parasite who is telling this story about how they took over humanity and basically made everything perfect. Nobody, no wars, nothing and like that anymore. And um, the parasite is, um, this is supposed to be scary. I know this is supposed to be scary. So, I keep putting books here. I think I'm just going to leave my TBR here because I have the other ones down here. And, oh god, there's so many. There's so many more. Tundra Trials by Monica Tesla, not Tesla, Tesla, Tesla. Uh, this is the second book in the Bounder series. I read the first book for a video, which I read books written by Monica's. I read sci-fi books written by Monica's. There was Monica Barnes and there was Monica Tesla, and I don't remember the third Monica. But anyway, this was my favorite by far. It's a middle grade that reads like YA which is the thing about YA I think YA tries to be adult but it shouldn't because it's teenagers so in this we read about kids or preteens and they read like kids and preteens so they act like I expect them to act which is a good thing this is book two I'm really excited oh and there's so much representation in this book and this book was published in when were you published? Tell me your secrets. 2016. So, okay. So, it's pretty recent. But, um, I like the representation that it has of, of differences in the spectrum of autism and differences in the spectrum of sexuality and differences in many spectrums. And it's just a really good read. I recommend you read that book. Then we have The Bane of My Existence, Only Human. I am only reading this to finish the series. I am halfway through and I am going to just push to read this and to say that I read it. I don't want to even, I don't, I don't want to hold it. I don't want to talk about it. Monica, why are you reading a book you don't like? Because it's the last in the series and I'm already halfway through. Honestly, I should DNF it because I fucking hate it. But here we are here we are i'm gonna i'm gonna finish this this is like the first book that i'm gonna finish after i film this video and then you know we'll get to it then we have one book that i'm really excited about except that it's long look at that you could kill someone with that <laughs> but it this is kid by sebastian de souza and this is a history of the future and this is about a so let me explain in the year 2060, basically, a series of devastating environmental disasters and a violent surge in cyber terrorism, the UN made it compulsory for every taxpaying citizen in all of its 193 United Nations to log in to the Perspecta universe, a virtual reality universe provided by the tech giant Gnosis, Inc. So began a period of history known as the Upload. Totally safe, pollution-free, environmentally friendly. What was at first an alternate reality has become the only reality. That sounds cool. Except there are, are people who refuse to live in that world. Who refuse to be part of this whole thing. And they are the offliners. Our main character is an offliner in the year 2078. So 18 years after this happened. And he finds... A cell phone. Fear myself. 
he, it's actually described as an iPhone. <laughs> so he finds an iPhone. And the interesting thing is that through this iPhone, he can communicate with someone from 2021 through Instagram. I just, it sounds so good. It sounds so good. And nobody's talking about it. So, yeah. Oh, then we have the, um, I know that was so fast. This was so good. Next. <laughs> so now we have um, the fall of Hyperion. I read Hyperion in one sitting. Who is this woman who used to read 600 page books in one sitting? Um, I've heard that this was that this is a really good uh, sequel. It's not at all like the first one, but it's a really good sequel and I want to read it and I'm so happy that I have the cover that matches the other one which is somewhere around here I don't know where it is maybe behind all of this mess but um yeah I really want to read the another one how many pages is this wow this is more pages than this one yeah I'm measuring <laughs> anyway this is like 700 pages um I'm scared now but I love the first one so much that I read it in one day so we'll see I also used to be able am I did I run out of room I also used to be able to read books in one day because of the job that I had and now I have a soul-sucking corporate job and yeah um, another book I tried to read Monument 14 uh, by Emmy LeBourne this is about a group of teenagers who are heading to school and the apocalypse happens and now they have to survive in a mall it kind of reminds me of <laughs> what's that called oh my god what's that movie called Dawn of the Dead the remake it reminds me of that. I mean, I know the original too, but it reminds me more of that. Then I have the other bait of my existence. I really need to stop reading books about uh, written by <laughs> Russian authors because I really try. <laughs> they are always so sad. And this is Metro 2033. Everybody tells me it's amazing. Everybody tells me I should read it because I love sci-fi and how dare I not read Mental third 2033 if I, if I like sci-fi. So I started it and um, I started it again when I was super depressed and the thing I was having a hard time with is I wasn't understanding anything. Not because the book wasn't explaining itself well. The book was doing a really good job of explaining itself. Um, I believe, I mean, everybody's read it and gotten it. <laughs> um, but I just kept having to repeat passages and read over and over. So I think this will be one for when I am doing much better again, but it's in my TBR. You'll see these in secret TBRs. I mean, you'll know that I'm reading them at some point, but you don't know when. And that's the magic of it. Okay, so next I have The Book of Phoenix by Nettie of Korofor. This was um, during a time where I was buying things because I just thought, you know, I... I found this author I like I'll buy all of their books and this is about this reminds me of Bioshock because it's like an engineered phoenix force that they create in this place and it sets itself free it, excuse me and yeah I don't know anything else I literally just bought it then we have <laughs> then we have Unwind by Neil Schusterman I tried to read this I really did um, but I'm gonna try again because I have the audio for it uh, this reads so early 2000s why like it's so 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 early 2000s why but there is something nice about that that remind I'm trying to find when this was written hang on because I, this was all the rage in booktube back in 2012 so 10 years ago um, yeah, this is about, uh, basically, if your parents don't want you uh, when you become a teenager, you are harvested for your organs to give to other people, which is the most fucked up concept I have ever read in my life. And that's kind of why I want to read it. Um, but everybody loved this series, and I'm guessing that, I mean, it's aged. It's from 2012, and it it belongs in, in that Hunger Games what's the other one divergent you know like that but this was the one that i was always interested in so um i'm gonna read this at some point in my life 
Maybe not this year, maybe next year, I don't know. Then we have the Skyward Flight, the collection of Sunreach, Red Dawn, and Evershore by Brandon Sanderson. I bought this because it was cheap and because it fits with my other books um, and because I have these covers. Yes, I can speak. These covers and um, I really hated Cytonic, just saying. But they say that this one's better. That's, those are better. We're getting to the end here, okay? Thank you if you're still with me because this is a lot, okay? Then we have St Stanislaw Lem, Return to the Stars. Now, if you don't know Stanislaw, Stanislaw Lem wrote one of my favorite books of all time, which is Solaris, and I've heard that he is so un undervalued as a sci-fi writer. And... I bought this because it was really cheap and because I want to read more Lem. I have no idea what it's about. Like that's it's just it. Did we run? No, we didn't run out of room. Okay, this book. Again, I keep I kept buying books, trying to find sci-fi that was different, that was out there, and then I just didn't read them. And this is one of them. War of Abe I by Ishan Pandey. Um, this is very similar to Kid, I think, in the sense that um, it's got. I know. I know it has pictures, but it always surprises me when I see them. Let's see if I can find one. Basically, this is about a world where computers, not computers, machines have taken over. There's no war. There's peace, but something doesn't seem right, and our main character, Azarel. Uh, basically gets on their wrong side because he's just completely against them and what they're doing all that jazz and then I have another Spanish book which is really weird because Spanish people don't write science fiction I'm not talking about Latin America Latin America has a really great sci-fi um, resurgence recently but uh, Spanish authors not very big on, on sci-fi and this is uh, Symbiosis by Bruno Puelles and this is basically again an alien race <laughs> arrives and it wants to establish a symbiotic relationship with uh, people and basically some people decide to become one with this race and then other people don't and then there's a murder so it's a murder mystery and I, I know nothing. This was the ultimate cover buy. <laughs> this is the, la um, the last, that, uh, all that's left in the world by Eric J. Brown. Look at that cover. Wouldn't you buy that? I think you would. But this is basically post-apocalyptic. I think it's um, LGBT uh, romance. And yeah, the world ended wipes out most of the populations and Jamie finds himself alone in a cabin in the woods. He's learned to fear other desperate survivors. Good, because if you ever find yourself in this situation, do not open the fucking door. Leave the door closed. But yeah, but then he meets Andrew. Jamie is compelled to help. As they, tape, as they step out into the strange new world together, their friendship begins to feel like something more. Jamie and Andrew are hoping for safety, for shelter, for community, but ahead of them is a perilous journey through a world torn apart. They don't know what they'll find there, but they might find each other. This is just going to be cute. I'm going to read it because it's happy. Okay, then I have three books, <laughs> which are... My husband bought them for me. Um, they're uh, graphic novels called Drifter. Uh, this is about a man, uh, this is the first one, uh, a man named Ab Abram Pollux has um, crash landed on a planet that is barely habitable and yeah, it's about him trying to return home so it's like <laughs> the Iliad but in space. I don't know if it's like the Iliad in space but it sounds like it and it's three volumes so that's three books. I only half left. I'm gonna... I'm gonna put this one. Oh, where, why did I put Steel Heart down here? For Christmas, my husband got me the first three Expanse books. I am excited. I am also terrified because this is heavy on the political and heavy on the military and heavy on the plot and not heavy on characters. And I'm a character 
<laughs> person. But I'm gonna at least give the first book a try and then we'll see how it goes. Um, this is about, I don't know, it's about, I, I did try to read this. This is about interplanetary warfare. We're gonna go with that. We're gonna put her down here because she heavy. And then we have, finally, the last five books. Um, one of them I'm already reading, um, short story collections. I bought a bunch of short story collections and then I realized I don't like short stories. So we have Ted Chiang, Exhalation, ex, Exhalation, yeah? And then Ted Chiang, Stories of Your Life and Others. Now, um, this might be for a secret TBR, but we're not gonna tell you what it is because it's a secret. And then we have All the Worlds Are Real, short fiction. Now, this is all, this is about everything. I've already read the first two stories. I'm really liking it. Um, I'm reading like one per day. So this is basically, it's in connect stories where um, all worlds are real. There are aliens, there are um, monsters, there's vampires, ghosts, all of it. And each story tells a story about something that we don't think is real, but in this story they are. The first story was a sci-fi story and it was really good. Then we have So Long Been Dreaming, post-colonial science fiction and fantasy. What? Me? The fantasy element, not my thing, but um, I really like that this was by, uh, it was edited by Nalo Hopkinson and Up in Um So I really want to read more on voices and um, people that are not white writing science fiction. That would be nice. And then we have Wasteland, Stories of the Apocalypse. I love me some apocalypse. I don't know if you noticed that I really like post-apocalyptic stories, but I really do. Um, and this one is just full of famous authors. And <laughs> I like it because Octavia E. Butler is the first one listed. And then we got Orson Scott Card, which we don't support um, homophobes, but you know. Jonathan Liam, George R. R. Martin, Stephen King, and Gene Wolfe. And that's it. Those are all the books. <laughs> that It's not that I plan to get to them, but I have to keep them in mind when I'm reading. Um, I'm a very much a mood reader, but I am going to start doing TBRs because, again, I need structure in my life. My life is just a mess right now like there's no structure to it basically I get up I go to work I come home I wait until it's time for bed and I go to bed I eat around somewhere those times some days I don't even eat I eat out of vending machines you know how sad that is vending machines so um, I need some structure so I'm gonna make a TBR so the next video you see from me will probably be my January TBR even though we're kind of already in the middle of January but it doesn't matter because you know what we're trying here we're doing our best all right guys um, if you made it this far leave me a alien icon uh, an alien icon uh, for um, uh, sci-fi because sci-fi I love sci-fi I love to be here again thank you so much for all of you that have hung around um, and thank you if you're new and that you watch this ridiculously long video like thank you so much and without further ado I'll see you in another galaxy far far away bye look at the viewfinder Monica don't look at the camera <laughs>